Hello again. Thank you for joining us uh, for today's service. Whether you're watching alone with your family or in a group, welcome. I wanted to share with you some pictures and even overhead drone footage from last week's outdoor drive-in service at Bridge. Unless things change, we have another drive-in service scheduled in August. But we're very excited about our all-church drive-in service July 12th at Expo. We're planning one service and inviting the community to join us. It's going to be a fun event and a pretty big deal. Please make plans to be there. Today I'm finishing up a simple June series I've entitled Word of the Week. Each week we've looked at one word meant to build you up and help you through these difficult days. Week one, we looked at the word encouragement. Week two, strength. Last week, celebrate. And this week, our word is laughter. Don't you love to laugh? What kind of laugher are you? Are you an explosive laugh, laugher, the, the type that when you laugh, your whole body shakes, you snort and scream, laugh and cry at the same time, you guffaw and slap your hands together? For you, it's side-splitting, roaring laughter that leaves you weak when you finally get through. Maybe you're a chuckler. You know the type, not very expressive or dramatic. Maybe you cover your mouth a little, embarrassed to be seen laughing. Maybe you've even turned into a polite chuckler. You don't think something's really funny, but you chuckle anyway, so the person making the joke doesn't feel bad. Maybe you're a smiler. It's pretty hard to coax a laugh out of you, like, don't waste my time trying to be funny. I've got more serious matters to attend to. You know the kind, a smiler like Mona Lisa, not giving too much away with your lips and definitely no humor in your eyes. I love to laugh and I like to make people laugh. One of the most difficult things about these pre-recorded sermons is that there's no audience. It's pretty hard to tell a joke to a camera. You try it sometime. So today, I've asked the tech team to add a laugh track. You know, the, the kind that's used in pre-recorded sitcoms when there's no actual audience. I'm going to try it out in just a few minutes. But first, did you know it's good for your health to laugh? It's been shown to lead to reductions in stress hormones such as cortisol and epinephrine. When laughing, the brain also releases endorphins that can relieve some physical pain. Laughter also boosts the number of antibody-producing cells and enhances the effectiveness of T-cells, leading to a stronger immune system. It was the English poet Lord Byron who wrote, Always laugh when you can. It's cheap medicine. And a Jewish proverb, A soap is to the body, so laughter is to the soul. Some of you might remember the Reader's Digest. The first thing I would do when it came was to turn to their monthly collection of jokes printed under the title, Laughter, the Best Medicine. Do you remember? Well, in my research this week, I, I came across an article by Reader's Digest of the most popular jokes they ever printed. And I want to share a few with you. A guy asks his buddy to check to see if his turn signal is working. The guy stands at the back of the car and shouts to his friend in the driver's seat. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. I see. It's a pretty good joke. One of the all-time most popular jokes in Reader's Digest history. But the joke, for the joke to work, somebody has to laugh. So let's try again with another Reader's Digest joke. Uh, one of their all-time favorite. This time, we're going to add a laugh track. A turtle's crossing the road when he's mugged by two snails. When the police show up, they ask him what happened. The shaken turtle replies, I don't know. It all happened so fast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Funny. A poodle and a collie are walking together when the poodle suddenly unloads on his friend. My life's a mess, he says. My owner's mean, my girlfriend ran away with a schnauzer, and I'm as jittery as a cat. Why didn't you see a psychiatrist, suggests the collie. I can't, says the poodle. I'm not allowed on the couch. 
right? Well, wow, wow. Here's another one. A guy spots a sign outside a house that reads, Talking Dog for Sale. Intrigued, he walks in. So, what have you done with your life? He asks the dog. I've led a very full life, says the dog. I've lived in the Alps rescuing avalanche victims. Then I served my country in Iraq. And now I spend my days reading to the residents of a retirement home. The guy's flabbergasted. He asked the dog's owner, why on earth would you want to get rid of an incredible dog like that? The owner says, because he's a liar. He never did any of that. <laughs> I'm on a roll. One more. What's the oddest thing that happens with a, with a hypochondriac support group? Members call in sick, but they all show up for the meeting. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I thought that was funny. It really is good to laugh. The humorist E.E. E. Cummings wrote, the most wasted of all days is one without laughter. God gave us laughter as a special gift to brighten up our days. Laughter gives our celebrations magic. Laughing makes our hardest days endurable. And who hasn't been touched by the almost spiritual miracle of a baby's first laugh? Maybe you don't feel much like laughing today, and that's all right. I, I know some of you are going through some hard, even tragic times. Some of you have felt so pressed down by the weight of this pandemic and all that's uh, accompanying it, it, you just don't feel like laughing. I understand that. The scriptures talk about that very thing from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Maybe you're going through a time of weeping and our heart goes out to you. Is there some way we can come alongside you and help you through it? Please, please let us know. But I, I want you to remember that there's also a time to laugh. My experience has taught me that sadness and struggle and grim seasons will most often give way to times of happiness. Joy will come back into your life. Don't lose hope of that. Trust God for the day coming when you will have time to laugh. I love this from Psalm 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. How many times, Mom, have you heard a Mother's Day sermon from Proverbs 31? You know the sermon, the wife of noble character. Now, I've heard from some of you wives and mothers out there and how much you come to church on Mother's Day hoping that the preacher hasn't chosen Proverbs 31 for his Mother's Day sermon. And why? Because that woman is a tough act to follow, isn't she? And every year your husband has to hear about how great she was and measures you against her. I wonder how many Mother's Days have been ruined by a dad saying as the family pulls out of the church parking lot, why can't you be more like that Proverbs 31 woman? There are 21 verses about this woman who weaves her own cloth and makes her own blanket sheets and pillowcases. She runs her own real estate business by day, and she sells her own line of clothing. Still, she wakes up in the middle of the night to get the family's food cooked. When she's not doing that, she's a ministry to the poor and hungry. And to top it all off, when her children wake up, the first thing out of their mouth is, Mother, you are blessed. Wow, big shoes to fill, Mom. But in fairness, she was a remarkable woman, wasn't she? A woman who deserved to be a standard that women of all ages could aspire to. One of the most remarkable things said about her is found in Proverbs 31:25. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. 
I've got to tell you that on those occasions I did preach about her, I struggled to understand that verse, to understand what it means to understand her. She laughs at the days to come. What does that mean? What are we to understand about this woman's attitude toward all the tomorrows in her life? Was she just naive? Surely nothing bad's going to come my way. Was she just extremely positive? Whatever's coming won't bother me. Was she beyond brave? Bring it on. Hit me with your best shot. I can take it. Ha! Was she spiritually smug? Did she say with a laugh, God's not going to let heartache come into my life? I've discovered something about this verse. It's been a tough scripture to translate from the original Hebrew. There are half a dozen different renderings by different translators. Let me share some of them with you from the New Living Translation. She laughs without fear of the future. From the contemporary English version, she is strong and graceful as well as cheerful about the future. The modern English version, version says it this way, she will rejoice in time to come. From the Living Bible, she has no fear of old age. Now, the Amplified Bible, uh, commenting on the surrounding context, puts it this way. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and her position is strong and secure. And she smiles at the future, knowing that she and her family are prepared. And then from the message, she always faces tomorrow with a smile. Maybe it means all these things. Maybe this was a woman who was more than self-confident. She was confident in her God. Maybe on her hard days, and surely she had them, she sang a little tune to herself, part of a longer song she'd learned when she was just a little girl, a song she and her family sang at worship the song from Psalm 27. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Now, I know it doesn't contain the word laughter, but this song, this scripture is filled with hope and joy. It really embodies all the words, words we've looked at this month. Encouragement, strength, celebration, and laughter. I believe the remarkable woman of Proverbs 31 was able to smile in thinking of her future because she was confident that this world was not her home, that there was another home, the land of the living, waiting for her and her family. And that hope, that waiting for the Lord, gave her exquisite joy. Psalm 27 is a song we should all sing. It's a, it's a song about believing that there is laughter yet to come in a land beyond, an eternal home waiting for us where we'll all be together and every wrong will be made right, every crooked way made straight, and laughter at every turn. The Old Testament talks about this from Isaiah 51. Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their head. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Isaiah was giving the Jewish people of the Old Testament a preview of heaven, where there would be no more sorrow. The Apostle John, centuries later, writing to believers of all ages, from Revelation 21. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. In that place, and in that time, without sorrow, sighing, mourning, crying, pain, or death, we will laugh. Gladness and joy will overtake us on that day when all of life's struggles are gone. Jesus promised this to his people. It's your memory verse for the week from Luke 6, verse 21. 
Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. The death of Christ on the cross was no laughing matter, certainly. It was the most heartbreaking moment in the history of mankind, both on earth and in heaven. And yet the cross for believers has given birth to joy. You see, the death of Christ gave birth to his resurrection. And through his resurrection, we have the hope of that coming day in the land of the living when we will burst forth with joy together forever where we will see each other and we will look upon the face of our Savior. This morning as we share together in the Lord's Supper, I, I want you to look back at the cross with, with a, a right feeling of sadness, of heartbreak for what it cost the Father to give his Son for your sins, for what it cost Jesus to suffer there on a cross so that we could have those sins forgiven. But then I want you, as you partake of the cup and the bread, the body and the blood of Jesus, to, in this meal, wherever you are, to find joy. Because this is a preview of a coming kingdom when we will share this meal together with believers from all time, all languages of every race, gathered together at the great wedding supper of the Lamb and praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Holy Spirit that because of the great sacrifice of Christ, a grand door has been opened filled with exquisite, eternal, and everlasting laughter. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we do thank you for your cross, Father, for your gift, Holy Spirit, that you now uh, live inside of us as a result of the cross and the empty grave. I pray, Lord, that you would help us endure these days, on this side of eternal, days that are often filled with sadness. Uh, and I, I pray, Lord, for those who this very day may be, may be enduring a sad uh, time, a time of, of a broken heart. Help us all to look ahead as we wait on the Lord and be reminded that this weeping only endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In Jesus' name, amen.